gets over in Seattle. Saints travel the long way across the country and get a W. They kick a field goal with just about two minutes to go. And that holds up. This was Alvin Kamara. 20 carries, 10 catches, 179 total yards on those 30 touches and scored his team's only touchdown. As for Seattle, not much offense. They had an 84-yard touchdown to DK Metcalf in the first quarter. Other than that, Geno Smith, 83 yards passing. So 84 in one play, 83 the rest of the night, basically. The game was chippy. The weather was nasty. There were a lot of flags, but it was close. It was exciting. And if you're a Saints fan, you loved it because now your team, after a bye last week, improves to 4-2 and two and very much alive in the NFC picture, while Seattle, who uh, is not in a division that you want to be in, if you're trying to come from behind, they fall to 2-5, and five, and still, they're going to have to play without Russ for a little while. All right, let's get our guys in. Two-time Super Bowl champion Brian McFadden, CBS Sports senior NFL writer Jonathan Jones. All right, BMAC, what's your headline from this game? Ugly, but they got the job done. The New Orleans Saints. This was a very, very important ball game for the New Orleans Saints. Not just because of their playoff aspirations, but trying to re remain relevant in their division. EK, when you look at the Saints, I mean, they had two losses coming into tonight's ball game, an ugly loss to the New York Football Giants. They could not afford to have a bad loss to a team that clearly won't make the playoffs. So, yes, it was ugly. It was grueling. But they came out on top, and that's the most important thing. And what about for all the betters they had to under, like myself? It was an under-the-cover matchup, and I'm so happy to see that cash in big time for me because I needed it. Yep, Seattle and the under were your plays. And look, we talk about it all the time. Geno Smith doesn't win, but he always covers. What do you do tonight? He didn't win, <laughs> but he covers once again. What's your headline tonight, JJ? Uh, Seattle's done. They needed to win this one. Uh, you know, they, they lost Russ, and they had to play it, L.A. They were going to lose that game. Okay, that's fine. They went up against Pittsburgh. They were competitive. They lost that game. All right. You looked at the Jags game, and that was going to be a win next week. I still believe it, it could be a win, but that game's going to be closer than we probably thought it would have been two weeks ago. They needed to win this game because uh, the schedule, while there are a few wins later on, there's the Texans, and there's the Lions, there's the Bears, and a couple other teams. Jags Washington. next week. Yeah, right. They needed this win because it's hard to see them getting to nine wins without this win. They can get there with the Jags. But this really does put them behind it just a little bit because then they have Green Bay and then they have Arizona. And whether Russ is there and whether he's healthy, I don't know if they'd be favored if Russ were healthy in both of those games. So uh, this might mean that Seattle's goose is cooked here. And I know it's early. It's a 17-game season. All of those things. But they needed tonight at home. They couldn't get the job done. They couldn't even get into the red zone with Geno Smith. Uh, they're, they're done. Yeah, 0-3 in their building, and this is a place where they're usually very, very good and tough to beat. Um, in your mind, was this it for Seattle, BMAC? Are you crossing them off? Is 2-5 and five too much to overcome? I mean, before we just say yes, nine straight years this team has found their way to a winning record. Eight of those nine years they had double-digit wins. They have found a way with bad defenses, good defenses, bad offensive lines, good offensive lines. Bad receiving cores, good receiving cores, because it's been Russ, it's been Pete Carroll, it's been Bobby Wagner, and we'll figure it out. Russ is coming back. Are you saying they're done? Yeah, I'm done. I'm right there with JJ. He's coming back, but we don't know exactly when he's coming back. And this team has no juice when Russell Wilson is not in the lineup. I mean, last week, big time point coming from JJ. They were competitive. They fought. We saw the ground and pound game uh, 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 crank up in the second half against Pittsburgh. Today, they couldn't get anything going, not to mention the passing game was missing the entire ball game. Geno Smith, you know, he's looking like a backup quarterback. He hasn't really taken advantage of the opportunities. Uh, the offensive line hasn't done him any justice as well. Uh, for some reason now, Tyler Lockett just seems to be an average wide receiver, and the same can be said for DK Metcalf outside of that big time play in the first half. So yes, I think they're done. Even with Russell coming back at some point in time, they will be too far behind the eight ball to make some type of comeback to make this thing really sticky at the end of the season, not to mention in the division. It's a two-team race in the a a NFC West, the Rams and uh, the Cardinals. Outside of that, the 49ers in Seattle, they're kind of in the same neighborhood right now. Uh, are the Saints any good, J.J.? Like, 
you know, there's an old saying, right? A famous, you are which record says right. you are. And they are four and two. But are they any good? I mean, when we look at who they've beaten, week one was a strange week, what they would do they with Green Bay. Since then, their schedule's not been that tough. They've lost games to Carolina and the Giants. Weird, it, it, weird games to Carolina and the right, Giants. Right, and they beat, they beat uh, Washington. They beat Seattle here without Russ. Are they any good or, or, or do we not know yet? I think the defense is really good. And we saw finally that this defense was able to create and get some sack production finally. Cameron Jordan finally got one on the board. We knew it was just a matter of time. Uh, and that was my bold statement for the night. And that came through. But uh, upwards of five sacks at least tonight for these New Orleans Saints. They are money in the red zone, both on offense and defense. But I'm going to keep it at the defensive side. And again, they didn't even get a chance to show their medal in the red zone because Geno Smith couldn't get the Seattle Seahawks there. They've been pretty solid uh, against the run. Uh, yeah, I didn't like how Marshawn Lattimore was taking the bait from DK Metcalf. Ultimately, it didn't cost his team. And hopefully this will be a learning experience for him and the rest of that secondary. I love how they're sending Malcolm Jenkins there on blitzes very, very regularly. This is a solid defense. You want to see consistency from the offense, but you are being captained by Jameis Winston. And so that's probably an impossibility to have consistency on the offensive side. So as long as the defense continues to play the way that they have throughout the first six games of the season, and certainly just like they played tonight, this is a team that can be on that next tier in the NFC because the NFC is very, very top heavy, right? You have the Cardinals and you have the Rams and you have the Bucks and you have the Packers, a team that that was the anomalous game that uh, the Saints won. But there are some really, really solid teams. The Cowboys right there at the top of the NFC and you're waiting for those two or three loss NFC teams to sort of show themselves the Saints are right there and so because we don't think of them as division leaders or a team that's going to be in the top five seeds in the playoffs you may not think or know how good they are but they're a solid team yeah but are they one of the elite teams and all those I mean, you just rattled off five really good not in teams. the NFC but they are good enough to get into the playoffs and if they get a good matchup on any given Sunday they could win that game remember this team I mean it was Drew Brees but they swept Tom Brady in the regular season last year the only time he's ever been swept and really had Tampa done in the playoffs and then just started turning the ball over in the right. second half. There we go. Um, BMAC, what about Alvin Kamara? He's not built like Derrick Henry where you're like, okay, he can just roll downhill on us for 17 games. He had 20 carries tonight and caught 10 passes. That's 30 <laughs> times the ball is in his hand in the field of play. Are they relying too much on him can he hold up like this over 17 weeks? Uh, or we just ask him to do too much, and eventually they're going to pay for relying on 41 this much? Yeah, they are relying on Alvin Kamara too much, but they have to, right? Uh, we know what he means in the running game, but he means a lot in the passing game because they don't have a number one wide receiver. And I, I agree with J.J. talking about the defense. I really love the defense. I think they're starting to get healthier. They're playing pretty good football. They just need to eliminate some of these splash plays that we've seen over the last few weeks. Uh, one surface again tonight. But offensively, they don't have a number one pass catcher. We don't know exactly when Michael Thomas will return. And then when he does return, right, how healthy will he be? So I think right now for the Saints, they are a playoff caliber team. I don't see them winning the division, but I can definitely see them getting a wild card spot. But it would be very, very difficult for them to do that if they don't address the wide receiver room. They got to go out and make a move. Uh, I know the tread deadline is, is looming. It's coming up. They got to go out and try to make a move to improve the wide receiver room because right now the guys that they currently have, they're a bunch of twos and threes at best. And we know when you have those type of guys trying to get into playoffs, you will not make a deep run in the playoffs if your running back is your best pass catcher. Yeah, Michael Thomas really put them behind the eight ball there with his decision uh, on surgery. A very, very curious decision. One that we probably don't talk enough about. We, we did in the preseason, but really this is a team that if they had a true number one receiver and a reliable target for Jameis Winston, maybe we'd finally start seeing more of that consistency that we've been yearning for for Jameis. But as far as Alvin Kamara, this is a guy we've been waiting for him, right? He didn't have as many screen passes so far this season as we saw that he had last year where he had something like 27 screen passes and got 170 plus yards on screens, a couple of touchdowns. So far uh, this season, he had just five catches on those screen passes. He got more, more involved in that passing game tonight, and it was excellent, and that's what they needed to do. Don't air the ball out all the time with Jameis. you got to pick your spots. 
Uh, Jameis has done a good job so far this season of picking when he wants to air the football out. He's had a lot of success doing that uh, on play action and when he can sense that the blitz is not coming. When the blitz is coming, well, you know, we're going to see there. But uh, Kamara, so dangerous, as we know, with the football in his hands, his yak tonight, somewhere around in the 120s area. Uh, just an incredible player that this is the guy that the Saints can rely on right now. Can you ride him throughout December and into January and win football games without having that true number one? No, you cannot. And BMAC, I think that you make a fantastic point that the Saints should be looking out there for a wide receiver. I don't know if they're going to be able to find one, one that they could actually meet at a certain price because everyone knows how desperate they are and that price might go up. Uh, but I, I would agree that at some point uh, you're going to need to know that you're going to at least have a reliable Michael Thomas coming back sooner rather than later. And if you do not, that here in the next eight days, they should absolutely be in the market. All right. So there you go. The Saints right now uh, looking pretty good. And, and, and ultimately, they find their way to get a win. Uh, let's wrap it up this way with the team that won. Uh, and I, I liked it when you said those teams, right? So in the NFC. You have Arizona, you have Tampa, you have the Rams, you have Green Bay, you have Dallas. Is, are the Saints in that class or are the Saints a full step below? You consider them one of the elite teams because record-wise they're there or are they a full step below those five teams that we just mentioned, BMAC? Full step below for me, the teams that you mentioned, they got wide receivers. They got a proven number one, and the guys that are not number ones can really take over a ball game for you. It's, if you need it's, be. it's also Brady, Stafford, Kyler Murray, Dak, and the reigning MVP Aaron Rodgers, and Jameis. Yes. Who doesn't belong and why? Right. Right. I mean, look, I, 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 Jameis has done some great things in the league, but he's not one of those. I mean, he he, he he's an outlier. Oh, and right? here's the, the other difference? thing: the, the the tier is five teams, but then that next tier, that full step below, and you can be a full step below. There's no one else occupying that space in the NFC with the Saints. It's not the Vikings. It's not one of the other NFC West teams. Uh, you know, it's, it's no one in the NFC East. The Falcons, or excuse me, yeah, the Falcons and the Panthers aren't there. And so it really is. It's those five teams up there that any given Sunday, any of those teams can beat any one of those other teams or beat the other one by 21 points in, in what we've seen so far this season. And then it's the Saints. And so if I'm the Saints and I just lost my generational first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback and we're actually four and one and just went into Seattle and won a football game. I'm thrilled that we're four yeah. and two right four now. Two. Yep. Four and two. That's exactly what they are. You know what you said. And there we go. So congratulations to the Saints. They find a way. They get a win. They check the box. Seattle, they're going to try to tread water until Russ comes back on a play at home next week against Jacksonville. They have not won at home yet this season. All right. Alvin Kamara. It's, look at it. I mean, 10 catches, 20 rushes. Here you go. Win the game for us, 41. I mean, I know MVPs are usually quarterbacks, but the MVP of this game no was doubt. that guy right there. Incredible performance. He was an absolute warrior the entire time. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.